If you have solar panels on your roof right now, you'll also have an inverter screwed into a wall in a discreet and probably shady place. The inverter is the most important part of the solar system. It turns the sun's heat into 240 volt electricity that can power your fridge or your microwave or be sold back into the electricity grid. You've probably heard of the Internet of Things. That's the increasing trend for everything that beeps in your house to be connected to the internet and able to be remotely turned off and on. Like my new dishwasher, which I can turn on from the beach or my office, if I could think of a reason why I'd want to do that. Inverters are the same. There's a new breed called Smart Inverters. They're connected to the internet and can be operated remotely. And 58% of the smart inverters presently in use in Australia are made by Chinese-owned companies. Companies like Huawei, which we all remember was famously banned from operating our 5G mobile network because of security fears. The company has issued a statement on Twitter saying we've been informed by the government that Huawei and ZTE have been banned from providing 5G technology to Australia. This is an extremely disappointing result for consumers. Huawei is a world leader in 5G and has safely and securely delivered wireless technology in Australia for close to 15 years. And so, just like that, our solar grid has a deep connection to China. The inverter works through interaction with the internet. And so that means that uh, in theory, everything should work absolutely fine. Your solar panels should convert electricity exactly as they should be. Cameron Stewart is our chief international correspondent. The concern here is really a step above that in the sense that if a foreign company manufactures it, then in the case of China, there is a potential for that to be used to disrupt or monitor or surveil the energy usage of someone's home. If you buy a solar system in Australia today, you have to get a smart inverter and it'll likely be a Chinese product. I don't think many people would have any idea at all that that is the case. And if they did have an idea, they probably wouldn't necessarily be worried because at the face of it, you know, solar energy doesn't sound like a very scary concept as far as what could be done with it if it got into the wrong hands. However, the reality is very different from that. It does mean that they're remote controlled and it does give the potential for Beijing, when they have Chinese owned companies controlling this, to actually direct those companies to do things which could be quite destructive towards the solar grid in Australia. We all now have kitchens that include probably at least one smart device. Is this a, a backdoor that we haven't really been thinking about up till now? It absolutely is. In fact, it's something that Western nations are really only coming to grips with now. Because with a country like China, for example, China's a very good manufacturer. It manufactures a lot of cheap electronic gear. And of course, in a free market like Australia, I mean, that's popular. That stuff is popular, understandably. And it's pretty good you know, quality most of the time. The issue here is a broader one, Claire, and that is that the under the Chinese uh, government rules, it is a totalitarian state. The government in Beijing does have the right to commandeer the information of any state-owned Chinese company. And so in theory, it has the uh, the ability to commandeer and demand that these companies that are creating these smart inverters for Australian homes, that they actually pass over that data or even manipulate that data according to the needs of the central government in Beijing. It's probably not fair to judge any company by their in-house promo videos. They're meant to be inspirational, but they can be a little naff, to put it kindly. We're providing power, clean energy to homes and businesses throughout the United States. This is something that I can tell my children I'm very proud of. SunGrow, which is a major supplier of smart inverters to the Australian and international markets, has made a suite of videos spruiking its credentials. You have people here that actually care about solar and making a difference and care about their customers and their sites and their people. In Australia, SunGrow celebrated a big milestone. It reached one gigawatt of supply to the solar grid. So let's now cross over to HQ in China and we get to hear from our founder and chairman, Professor Chow. 
Professor Chao Raishen is the boss. Hello, everyone. Greetings from Sangro. I'm Chao Raishen, founder and chairman of Sangro. And Professor Chow is also president of the state-run China Voltaic Industry Association. That's how business works in China. Companies are connected to the government in ways it's hard to imagine in Australia. Basically, the whole economy is an arm of government, and companies are required by law to adhere to the Chinese Communist Party's policies. Governments around the world have introduced laws to deal with potential foreign interference. But while we were busy worrying about big things, did we forget the little things? It's a big expansion, isn't it, of what we might think of as critical infrastructure. Five years ago, if you'd asked me what was critical infrastructure, I might have said roads and the telephone network, maybe. Now it's potentially the dishwashers, <laughs> right? That's right. And, and, and new technology, all sorts of new technology that, that you know, we, we never gave a second thought to in the past. And one of the problems here, of course, is that commerce moves much faster than regulations. The Home Affairs Minister, Claire O'Neill, has recognised this danger and uh, she said they're trying to increase manufacture of these products in Australia rather than rely on foreign vendors. The regulations to try and protect these sort of new devices from potential cyber warfare, if you like, from other countries, just lag behind the reality of the fact that these products come on the market quickly and they're, you know, people don't really uh, understand the multifaceted problems that can be caused by them. So now our homes are bristling with smart devices, how do we keep them safe? That's after this short break. Back in February, the Australian's journalist Ellen Wynette broke the story that tens of thousands of Chinese-made surveillance cameras had been installed in government buildings, even though Australia's own security agencies had warned they could be used to surveil government staff. They're also in private homes across the country. I think people genuinely don't know. I think some people will be shocked to learn that the uh, cheap camera that they bought from a retail store and put out in their driveway or, or in their small business could be leaking that data back to the Chinese government. That's Liberal Senator James Patterson, whose work has exposed the extent of Chinese-made smart devices across Australia. Here's Cameron Stewart again. Senator Patterson, uh, who's the shadow cyber security minister, believes that the government really has to work a lot harder to police this sort of area. He's concerned that the, uh, in his words, the, the government's rush to renewables, such as solar, is being done without due diligence when it comes to cyber security and an understanding of the vulnerabilities that these new forms of energy and their monitoring and the way they work is actually presenting to the government. As the internet takes over so much of our lives, there's another new trend back to the old ways, like the US Navy, which in 2018 reintroduced the old art of celestial navigation using sextants. Bring the sun down to the horizon. When its lower limb is touching the horizon, Williamson, look to your sextant. The orb is no longer rising. Then it has reached its zenith. And that would be noon, sir. That's 17th century technology, using the stars and mathematical calculations to find your location anywhere in the world and set a course for home. And why? Because of the fear that hackers from China, Russia or anywhere else could take down global GPS navigation systems at any moment, leaving anyone relying on satellites completely lost. So. Can we use the internet safely, given the dominance of nations like China? I think it's a great learning curve, just like the internet was a great learning curve and still is. The, the actual way we react to the internet and the new products is a massive learning curve. And I think we're going to have to pump a lot of money into the intelligence agencies, the cybersecurity side of things, even more than we've been doing so far, because it is the pace of technology and new products are far outstripping the ability to regulate them and even understand, frankly, exactly how they work and what the dangers might be. So, look, I guess one, one temporary uh, 
measure would be to make things a bit more basic and not rely too much on technology. But I just don't think that's the way of the world. I mean, we don't work that way. You know, everyone moves forward rather than backwards. And I just don't see that as a viable solution. So I think what you're going to have to have is a government that at all levels is very, very vigilant about this stuff because, you know, something that you and I haven't even thought of in two years' time might suddenly become a great espionage opportunity for a, an adversary for Australia. We just don't know at this stage. New Pentagon video tonight showing a Chinese warship cutting in front of a U.S. Navy destroyer. And of course, it comes just days after a close encounter between U.S. and Chinese military planes. Here's our chief foreign correspondent, Ian Pound. You spend a lot of time speaking with people in the diplomatic and intelligence communities in Australia and overseas. What are you hearing now about what China is doing? There seems to have been a bit of a thaw in our relations with China. Where are we at? It's a two-step process. The diplomatic thaw as such, the very slow thaw, I should point out, between Australia and China is certainly not being matched in any way by the intelligence side of things. China's attempts to break into Australian government and business networks and education networks is as strong as it's ever been. It's, it's, not, it's unrelenting. And uh, the intelligence agencies are certainly not having any sort of detente in any way at all, in the same way that you might have seen on the diplomatic front. So it's really have a two-speed situation here where you have a slightly more conciliatory diplomatic climate. But as far as behind the scenes goes, the cyber warfare world is absolutely at full scale and it's increasing rather than decreasing. Cameron Stewart is The Australian's Chief International Correspondent. Thanks for joining us on The Front. Our team is Leah Samaglou, Kristen Amiot, Tiffany Dimack, Jasper Leake and me, Claire Harvey.